All right, let's look at our predictions from last week. Uh, we all had BYU winning. We were all wrong. Let's move on to this week. <laughs> way wrong. I like how you moved on. All right, Blaine, what do you have for Saturday night? Well, I, I think that it's going to be 31 to 21 for BYU. I think BYU will be able to run the football, and I, I'm, I'm banking on Cole McDonald not playing. So if he plays, then I want to adjust that at game time because <laughs> I think they'll score more, and BYU's going to have to score more. If he doesn't play, I think it's 31 21. Brian, you've got uh, the Warriors coming Ooh. in. I just made, I made, I made my case five seconds ago. I don't care who. This, the defense isn't doing the fundamental things that, that makes me confident. So. Okay, David? I got a close one, 24-23. I think BYU is able to edge it out at home and finally get a home win for this uh, the fans that come to the stadium. I think the defense is going to show up. BYU wins 35 nothing so long as McDonald's. Wow, that's a bold Ooh, prediction. That is, that is a bold prediction. That's our show for this week. For Blaine Fowler, David Nixon, Brian Logan, and all of us at BYU TV Sports, I'm Dave McCann. BYU football with Kalani Sataki is coming up next. Coming up, BYU looks to bounce back against the Rainbow Warriors, and we're looking ahead to the weekend here in Studio C with Kalani, former UH wideout Dylan Colley, and assistant coach Ed Lamb as BYU football with Kalani Sitake starts now. Oh, right. Let's it go. Finds his guy. Touchdown. Hill for a first down and more. Hurdles his way. Touchdown. Tied up, waiting, waiting. Here's the pass. Touchdown! Toss to Luke. Luke on the sidelines at the point. Touchdown, BYU! Tanner throws. Catch made by Katoa. Inside the pylon. Touchdown, Cougar. Going deep again. Caught by Stallone at the 30 yard line. Catch made by Romney. Wills away from the defender. 10, 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Gunner Romney. This is BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Presented by Intermountain Healthcare. And now, your host, the voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel. Well, good evening once again, Cougar Nation. And from the BYU Broadcasting Building here in Provo, we welcome you to another edition of BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. As tonight, live on BYU TV and BYU Radio, we usher in the second half already of the 2018 season. We invite you to join tonight's conversation by submitting questions for Kalani and our other guests using hashtag Sitake Show on Twitter, as well as on Facebook and Instagram via the BYU TV sports accounts. I'm joined by the head coach of the Cougars, Kalani Sitake, and wow, back-to-back -back losses after back-to-back -back wins got you to 3-1, and one. and so you're sitting here at 3-3 three and three through six games, second half starts now. Where is this team, maybe relative to where you thought they might be, could be, and where they are uh, concerning your expectations? Well, obviously, they're disappointed, just like I am, you know, and uh, we know we could be playing better. The last two weeks have been really disappointing, and, us, we're facing adversity right now, and so um, I think uh, we're going to approach it with a positive attitude and uh, to grow from it. I know that um, there's negativity around, but that doesn't help us. It destroys, and positivity will help us grow from these experiences and uh, make sure that we finish the second half of the season a lot better. Um, what's disappointing is that we're just way better than what we've been playing, and that's my job as a head coach, and uh, to get them in a better position to succeed, and then that's what I'm focused on right now. And, we're um, going to use the core principles of hard work, and um, but also know that we have to tweak some things and, and make some changes, whether it's scheme or personnel. We'll, we're ready to do that as well. So uh, even though you've had some really high spots in the first month and a half or so, uh, you still feel, it sounds like, that your best football is still ahead of you. Yeah, and we're running out of time, so there's a sense of urgency to get it going uh, right now and then get it, get it done this week. And so, um, you know, I've said it before, we were a good practice team. Uh, we just need to transfer it over from the practice field to the game field, and that's. Um, and, but you know, we can't keep doing what we've done the last couple of weeks and expect it to change. And so, we have tweaked a few things this week, and and um, I'm expecting better better performance and a better result this weekend. Okay, uh, BYU's last game was the war for the wagon wheel versus Utah State. The game was played last Friday night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. BYU and USU, and the Aggies got off by scoring on defense in the first quarter. Pick six. And you were down seven zip. Yeah, disappointing. Fourth down, um, had less than a yard to go, and, and uh, you know, just an untimely uh, turnover. Uh, defensively, this was another fourth down. We held them, you know, and had to find a way to get out of it. Not enough pressure on the quarterback. He had time to throw it to a, the last read on, on, on the route. So throwback makes it 14 0. BYU's down 21 0 when the Cougars get on the board, and Lopini Katoa. Doing a lot of scoring of late, both on the ground and through the air. Lopini picks up his first touchdown catch as a Cougar. 
and it's 21-7. You were hoping to narrow the gap uh, before halftime, but you did go down 21-7 at the break. As the third quarter got underway, Utah State was scoring again, and you're down 28-7 uh, early in the third. Yeah, and then we were just, we, were, we dug a hole way too deep. The turnovers cost us early in the game, and um, yeah, it's just, it seemed like the same type of thing happened that when we played against uh, Washington the week before. BYU did trail 35-7 for a second consecutive week. They do get back on the board. A little sprint out from Tanner Mangum here in quarter number three. Late in the third quarter and number three, Dylan Colley has his first touchdown as a BYU Cougar. That was nice to see. And Dylan's one of our guests tonight on the show. And from 35-13, BYU's turnover troubles resulted in a minus three margin. Kalani is tough to win games at minus three. Yeah, and uh, we talked about last week that we have to be able to take care of the football. I'm not like seven turnovers that we had the year before, but uh, three turnovers aren't good enough, and we didn't create enough turnovers on defense to even compete. Last score of the night for BYU was Zach Wilson to Gunnar Romney. And just like Zach Colley, Gunnar Romney picks up his first touchdown as a BYU Cougar. And Gunnar's somebody that never really quite had a full camp to get ready for the year, so he's kind of making his way into the season as the game ends. BYU falling by a score of 45-20. to 20. We just saw BYU's last drive there. It was orchestrated by the freshman quarterback, Zach Wilson. It was an explosive drive, uh, 77 yards and only six plays. Kalani, and for a team looking for chunk plays, uh, he showed the ability to go out and, uh, and get you a few of those. Yeah, he's a special player. That's why we went and recruited him, you know, and uh, battled hard to get him here. And, and it, with this run, he became our leading rusher. So... He's uh, definitely got um, some skill uh, in the run game as well. He's athletic, and he the ball comes out really nice when he throws it. So he, he's a true freshman, but you know we have a lot of true freshmen playing, and a lot of young guys playing on on our team. And um, I was pleased with the way he he held his his composure and was able to get the you know get the ball delivered to the right receivers. So you put him in there clearly to show what he could do late in the game. He wasn't in there to just get you to the end. He was there to make some plays. And he did very well in limited time. How prepared is he to do more if called upon? Yeah, he's ready. I mean, I, I think uh, now that we're looking at that midseason, no one's a rookie anymore, you know. So there's a lot of practice time, a lot of uh, game time, maybe not as much as for some others, but there was enough reps taken in, in fall camp and now midseason that uh, everyone should be ready to play. That That's... Uh, that has the ability. You've said every position's up for evaluation. The mm -hmm. one that gets the most attention and that can impact the team the most, of course, is, is quarterback. What kind of past experiences and, and feedback are you going to be drawing upon as you consider who will take the first snaps on Saturday? Well, I mean, the, the competition's still up in the air, and, and um, we have some ideas on what we're going to do personnel-wise, not just with the quarterback, but all of them. But uh, we have to just be willing to make the, the right decisions, and, and uh, the guys that deserve it will play. And that's... I'm not going to tell everyone what our, what our announcement is, but um, the guys that take the field on Saturday night will have deserved it through the week and throughout the past couple of weeks that, that have worked really hard. And um, yeah, so that's uh, no different than what we're going to do, but we just have to be willing to make the decisions. Okay, let's uh, flash back to Friday again for a moment as we uh, take a look at the game stats presented by Nissan Intelligent Mobility. Now the most exciting tech you own is in your driveway, and here's how the stats shook out for BYU and Utah State. And uh, the rush yards uh, were probably among the most notable numbers to pop out of that game in addition to the margin we talked about at minus three. And uh, it's not so much always just about pure raw yardage. As Kalani, uh, we can see that uh, the final totals were pretty close. It's what happened uh, when you had the ball or gave the ball away, as the case may be, or field position plays into it as well. So it's more than just numbers. And uh, just the, the game got away from you earlier than you would have hoped, obviously. Yeah, and it's just establishing our, our, our identity and being consistent with it. You know, the, we don't give up that many run yards on defense. And on offense, we should run for more than that. Um, and that's what the, the identity that we established early in the season. And uh, obviously, teams are going to do whatever they can to take it away. We get that if, as an offense. And, so you have to do things differently to make them honor it. But um, for the most part, we, we consider ourselves a balanced team and we are able to run the ball whenever we need to and throw the ball. And I think if a defense is gonna take away and load the box, that we should just air it out the whole time. I mean, that's kind of what it comes down to, you know? So uh, we have enough weapons to do all of that and, and uh, we'll see what happens in the game, what, what UH does with their defense and whatever they're willing to take away, then we'll have to just find other ways and get our, our playmakers the ball.
We'll talk a bit more about UH, uh, UH Hawaii in the next segment. Uh, speaking of mobility, which uh, the intelligent mobility stats from Nissan, you wish a few key players were more mobile right now than they've been on defense because they've been hurt. Uh, Diane Gomwalik, who's been out for a few games, and Squally Canada on offense has kind of been in and out as he deals with uh, a lower body issue. So health hasn't been the greatest uh, lately. You hope some guys get back here before too long. Yeah, and that's part of the game. I think we talk about this every week, you know, that the um, uh, Diane is practicing now. We expect him to be back this week. Um, unfortunately for Zane Anderson, his season has come to an end, and he'll have surgery in the next week or so. Um, but we will redshirt him because he's only played in four games, and he'll be a senior for us next year. Um, but the others are still battling through their injuries, and we'll see. It's more a game time decision for the for the rest. But um, other guys will have an opportunity to have to step up and, and make plays, and uh, we expect him to. We feel like we have enough talent to perform a lot better than what we've done in the past couple weeks. Too bad about Zane. He tried to give it a go this past week, didn't he? Yeah, and he's a tough kid. I mean, he, he, he worked as hard as he can to try to play in the Washington game. That couldn't, he couldn't get it going there. And then the Utah State game, it just, my job as a head coach is to protect him. And I think he, he wanted to just keep pushing through the season. Um, but then it would just, it would just ruin his, his, his injury. And um, that's just not going to work, you know, and I'm not going to sacrifice a young man's health for the sake of, of us trying to win. And so uh, we'll get him back next year. He'll, he's a captain for us and a leader, so uh, it's unfortunate. It's part of the game, but um, yeah, we, we just can't keep asking him to hurt himself even, even more just so that we can, you know, we have the right guys on, on the field. But uh, the next guy will step up, and we've we got a lot, of, a lot of players that can step up and play for us, and we look forward to having them perform this weekend. Guys like uh, Riggs Powell, Isaiah Kafusi, mm -hmm. anybody else you have in mind there? Or? Yeah, I mean, we, we have a lot of young linebackers, Max Tooley and, and um, uh, Peyton Wilgar. There's a lot of guys that can do it. Jackson Kafusi can play as well. And, um, you know, so there's guys that have to step up, and um, we'll, we'll devise a scheme that will get the best 11 on the field and have different plays that allow us to get more pressure on the quarterback and uh, hopefully be disruptive enough to cause turnovers so that we can create big plays and, and definitely stop the run. Okay, best wishes to Zane Anderson then. Thanks, Coach. Uh, for your day-to-day -day Cougar sports play-by-play -play watch, BYU Sports Nation with Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. Weekdays at noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. When we come back, a look ahead to the weekend with the Rainbow Warriors coming to town. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. You're watching Super Tuesday on BYU TV, presented by Siegfried and Jensen. If I got hurt and was laid up at home... I wouldn't even think to call a lawyer. What a hassle. I'd want to meet them first. What if I told you that for your first consultation, your lawyer will come to you, home or hospital? Really? Really. They do that? If you've been seriously injured, we'll come to you. It's your job to get better. It's our job to deal with the insurance companies and protect your legal rights. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU versus Hawaii. 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain, Saturday. Life as a foundling isn't easy. With oppressive taskmasters and unforgiving rules, you'd think life would be pretty bleak. Unless you have someone like Hetty around. Hetty Feather, Sundays at 6 Mountain on BYU TV. I feel like we're home right here. Family Movie Nights on BYU TV. When a successful lawyer gets in trouble with the law, he is sentenced to coach a losing hockey team for community service. But he quickly finds purpose as he inspires his ragtag team to win in the Mighty Ducks. Grab the popcorn and hit the lights for Family Movie Nights all this month on BYU TV. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life, and by... Nissan, innovation that excites.
We are back. We have more BYU football with Kalani Sitake here in Studio C, live on BYU TV and BYU Radio, Saturday night at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. It is BYU and Hawaii. The visitors looking for their first ever win in Provo, while at the same time hoping to get bowl eligible already. They're 6-1, and one, but they play 13 games, so they're looking for a seventh win to secure postseason eligibility. And uh, the schedule, not the most uh, uh, difficult in the world to this point, but they've won six, Kalani, and uh, six out of seven. What we're seeing here is video of them beating Wyoming this past weekend with the backup quarterback. So we don't know what their quarterback situation is going to be yet this weekend. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and Nick Rolovich is a really good coach and a great offensive mind. Um, they, lead, they lead the NCAA in so many stats and passing yards, and they're up there, one of the best teams out there that's, that's for you know, putting up a lot of points and putting up a lot of yards. And so uh, we'll have to be ready for them. And, and uh, they air it out. They have some good skill. Um, and obviously they have a good quarterback and the backup can help them win games too. So um, Rolo's a really good coach and I expect their best shot. And we have to be ready to play. We have to be a lot better than we have the last two weeks. And we have to devise a scheme that will be able to slow down that offense. Yeah, they switched up their offensive scheme a little more. It's basically a run-and-shoot team now mm -hmm. and a very good offensive team. And like Utah State, scoring a lot of points. But they did score only 17 this past weekend with the quarterback other than Cole McDonald playing. And that does have a big impact on how they look. I mean, he's just a really spectacular quarterback. And the new kid's a freshman. So if Cole can't go, they look, they look, they look different. Well, we're going to have to prepare for their best quarterback and their starting quarterback. And that's... Uh, I don't know the extent of his injury or whatever the reason why he missed it, the game, but we're planning on him playing the game. And then whoever shows up, it doesn't matter. We have to get after him. So um, we, we can't allow the quarterbacks to sit back and just pick us apart. And so a uh, pass rush has to show up. And, and it's type of like a run and shoot, air raid type of offense that they can really get a bunch of yards on us. And we have to be, a, we have to be on point with the disruptive timing of the throw and create some turnovers. Now, UH also features a wide receiver with some Utah ties. You probably know a little bit about uh, John Ursua. Yeah, I know John real well and, uh, and knew him since he was a kid. I coached uh, his brother Jared at Southern Utah. And uh, Jared and my brother Fessy used to talk to best friends and their best men at each other's weddings and stuff like that. So I've known John. I um, you know, wish he could be here with us, but uh, he's done a lot of great things as far as catching a lot of balls. and. They get him the ball. He's an athletic kid and can move, and, and uh, he's got some great skill in, in, in catching the ball and receiving the ball and creates space. And so we, we have to be on top of it. We've seen some really good receivers in the past six weeks, and, and he's no different. He's another guy that, that we have to be able to defend. He himself has 13 touchdowns on the year already, a 12 through the air and a one on the ground. BYU has played 30 games against Hawaii, 122, lost eight, and all eight setbacks were in Honolulu. So they haven't ever won in Provo, and they'd like to get one certainly on Saturday night. BYU's out to stop them as they look to go 10-0 all-time against the Bows, Bows at Lavelle Edwards Stadium. Well, fans, you can check out the BYU Sports Nation right now with Kiki Solano. It's the latest in Cougar sports with a social media twist. Watch it right now on the BYU Sports Nation Facebook, IGTV, Twitter, and YouTube accounts. As we head to break, we want you to know that you can enjoy a full hot breakfast buffet, dinner Monday through Wednesday, a kitchen and a large grassy backyard along the Provo River Trail, all at the residence in Marriott in Provo. After this break, the coach takes your questions in studio and from social media on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. I volunteer at Primary Children's Hospital because I care about helping families with sick kids. I volunteer at the 512 Foundation because I care about our kids and community. And I volunteer because I care about Utah's future engineers. Do you know someone who cares about making our community better? I Am Flash will recognize your unsung hero and donate $1,000 to their favorite local charity. Iamflash.com slash hero. I care about making the world a happier place. No matter what stage you're at in life, you're always looking to take the next step forward. At Deseret First Credit Union, we want to take each and every next step with you. With low auto loan rates, you can be ready to see what's around every new corner and amazing rates on home mortgages, so you can move up to something you've always dreamed of. Deseret First Credit Union, with you every financial step of the way. Membership and eligibility required. Equal housing lender. It's another entertaining week on BYU TV. Tonight at 8 Mountain, 
Todd Hansen scours the land to find the most amazing stories from everyday people. It's another riveting episode of The Story Trek. Then, after becoming a Kung Fu champion, Daniel visits the home of his teacher, where they face rivals of the past and present in The Karate Kid Part 2, tomorrow at 7 Mountain. Watch your favorite BYU TV shows here and catch up anytime on BYUtv.org or the BYU TV app. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. All right, here's some of how, how some of our Cougars in the NFL played over the weekend, which included last night Taysom Hill on a night that uh, Drew Brees sets the NFL's all-time career passing record. Taysom Hill gets in the backfield and scores his first NFL touchdown in the regular season. We hope first of many down the line as Taysom's got a nice career ahead of him still. Kyle Van Noy with eight tackles for the Patriots in their win over the Colts. And uh, Fred Warner. Still playing a middle linebacker there for the 49ers who fell to the Cardinals over the weekend. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Satake. Use the hashtag Satake Show on Twitter. And you can also comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our Q&A sessions, the first of which begins right now here in Studio C. And we have at the mic, Jack Carpenter. Hello, Jack. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. Uh, so just my question, pretty general. Um, what's what's the game plan for the for the Hawaii game? Just give well, it all up. Yeah. <laughs> Try not to give it away to Hawaii because I'm sure they can. They have BYU TV too. So. Ah. Um, oh, we just had to play a lot cleaner. We had to play BYU football. Mm -hmm. I talked about um, our identity. We need to, we need to develop our identity and stick with it. We're a tough football team. We haven't played tough football the last couple weeks. Mm -hmm. So we need to play a physical style of football game on offense and defense and make sure that we make plays. So that's, that's without getting too specific, yeah, we, yeah. we have to bring back the tough, the tough part of football for us. Cool. All right, you, thank you. you. you meant, thanks, Jack. You mentioned uh, post game with us, I think, on, on Friday, uh, referencing some missed tackles you saw that you may want to tackle a little more uh, this week in practice. Was that something that was kind of in the moment, or are you going more physical in practice? Or? Well, I, I, think, I think the most important thing is to keep it specific to the guys that are making the mistakes. So what you don't want to do is panic when um, certain individuals are missing the tackles and then you don't want to punish the whole team and D-line guys are like, well, hey, hold on, why are you making us do all that? You know, so I think you keep it specific to the individual and specific to the position and they could be a little bit more physical in practice too, but we've also tried to be a little bit more physical by striking, um, but uh, at the same time, you can't panic and just go crazy and make everyone um, punish when, when, and punish everyone when there's only a certain amount of guys that need to improve on it. So. Um, we, we've added that and, and, and changed up a little bit of things in practice, and that, that needed to happen in order for us to improve. Okay. Uh, from at G Hansen 25 on Twitter, what's the plan to increase pressure on opposing quarterbacks the rest of the season? Yeah, we just have to get to them, you know, and, and uh, if we can't get it to them with three or four, then we have to add more. And that's, I think that's a, a common thing to do, and we just have to be willing to do it. And so. Uh, I love getting pressure on the quarterback. It's one of my favorite things, and so um, the head coach, and so things better change. Okay, Cash Peterson is next up at the mic. Young Cash is making his way over to speak with Kalani Sitake. Hello, Cash. Who is your favorite player on the Jazz? On the Jazz? <laughs> oh, yeah, I love the Utah Jazz. Uh, I like Donovan Mitchell. He's, that's my. That's I love watching him play. Um, if you're asking about all time, I would. I, I, I love all the players that play, but if they're from BYU, then I like them even more. But yeah, Donovan Mitchell is my favorite. I like Rudy Gobert. I like, I like basketball. Thank you. Good Thanks, question. Cash. Uh, from social media, from at uh, Jacob.Flansberg on the old Instagram. Um, well, we kind of hit it earlier, but we'll get a new, a new take on it perhaps from you. What is your approach to choosing a starting quarterback for Saturday's game? <laughs> I wish it was Saturday, so you guys would just leave me alone. Right. <laughs> Let's just, guys, the best one will play, and and that's what's going to come down to. We're mid-season, and that's, you know, so I'll, I'll we, I will make sure, and so are our coaches, Coach Grimes, and 
he able to make sure that the best quarterback will take the field and and uh, every position that we have the best guys. Okay, uh, at Ridgeline underscore day on Twitter. Coach, love having you as the head coach at BYU. What would you say are the most crucial aspects of implementing a culture for a program? Well, the most important thing is to, is to get them to believe and, um, and that make sure that the belief is in what the mission of the school and what our program is all about. And so uh, I've said this before that uh, BYU is a unique place. And so if players uh, want a certain kind of experience that BYU can't provide, then they should go there. You know, so what we're going to do here is, is, is push forward the mission of the church, the mission of the gospel of, of Christ, and make sure that our players uh, represent well on the field and off the field. Um, and so that's, that's what it comes down to. But the belief system has to be in line with what the school is. And I think if they want to be here at BYU and they believe in the same things, and they'll play hard for the school and play hard for their fans. All right, and fans, thanks for the questions. We appreciate them. Uh, Wednesdays at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. Get better acquainted with Cougars past and present on Behind the Mic with a weekly hour of in-depth conversation Wednesdays, 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. In the next segment, we'll be joined by former Hawaii and current BYU wide receiver, yeah, Dylan Colley. He'll be joining us here in Studio C. But uh, before we go to break, uh, Cougar Nation is this week mourning the passing of legendary broadcaster and longtime voice of the Cougars, Paul James. PJ called BYU sports for 35 years, and in that time he created an emotional bond between himself and his listeners and a lasting link between the Cougars and their fans. I was privileged to serve with PJ for the final nine seasons of his tenure, and that apprenticeship allowed me the opportunity to attempt to fill his shoes upon his retirement. And it has been merely an attempt because no one could ever truly replace Paul James. For BYU fans everywhere, PJ performed his job with passion and spent countless hours in preparation, resulting in a masterful presentation. His voice was at the same time melodious and excitable, soothing, yet compelling. Listening to Paul James call a game was spending time with a dear friend. And Kalani, Paul was your friend too. He was your play-by-play -play guy for your entire playing career. Yep, I, I remember his voice and, um, you know, as a fan and as a player, and so he'll be missed. But uh, we have his voice and all the wonderful memories that he's, he's given us. Paul James has left us at the age of 87. They prefer to be bringing the heat. Getting set for success. Demonstrating their drive. But when their blood and sweat turns to tears or anything else, we lay the groundwork. For BYU's athletes to hit the ground running again. And you as well. Intermountain Healthcare, official medical provider for BYU Athletics. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Well, the premise of the show is kids and parents match up answers, and then the all-important uh, bake-off, and whoever has the most points comes over and spins the prize wheel back there. I think what's going to happen is they're going to be inspired to play it at home. On the season finale of The Story Trek, I'm back in the gem state. I can't even explain how hard this year and a half has been. Three years ago, I met a remarkable woman battling a potentially fatal disease. I lose my hands for a minute. And because Ashley had the courage to share her story. Perfect. Good job. Plus, a potato points me to longtime friends who refuse to act their age. As long as you're able to move and keep moving, then life will treat you well. Watch The Story Trek tonight at 8 Mountain on BYU TV. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. The BYU TV Sports Countdown to Kickoff. BYU versus Hawaii. 9 Eastern, 7 Mountain, Saturday.
Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalandi Sitake on BYU TV and BYU Radio presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Well, he's the last of the four members of the most prolific wide receiver family in BYU football history who's followed his dad and two brothers into the Cougar football record books. Please welcome to the show, Dylan Colley is with us. So you scored a touchdown this past Saturday against Utah State, your yeah. first BYU touchdown. With that touchdown, another Collie family record was set. The Collies now have 39 receiving touchdowns, the most by an immediate family at BYU topping the Bellini brothers. Mark and Matt had 38. So the Collies have topped the Bellinis. I, think, I mean, they did it with two. And I think yeah, it four, took four, so. but hey, it's all good. It's all right. So breaking it down, Austin, 30 touchdowns. Scott, your dad, four. Zach, your brother, four. And you had the one and one of many, we hope, for BYU. Yep. So more to come, right? That's the plan. That is the plan. Yeah, that's the plan. So let's take a look at this first family of uh, BYU wide receivers, uh, the Collies. Uh, now, Scott was, was first here uh, back in the day, mm -hmm. and then uh, later on played in the CFL, as I recall. Uh, then you have a little gap for some kids to be born and grow up, yeah. and, and then Zach was first here. Yeah. Zach has a special place in my heart because he was my first ever intern when I worked at KSL. I brought Zach in. He wanted to learn how to be a broadcaster, and it didn't work out. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's Zach, and he scored the four touchdowns we talked about, and then Zach was followed by Austin. Some have heard of this guy. And um, we'll see you as well here coming up in a second. How much, I mean, when did you determine early in your life that I guess, I guess I'm a receiver? Uh, it didn't take very long. <laughs> I, uh, I started out playing, you know, obviously you pop Warner and things like that. You play uh, running back and quarterback. Um, but really by the time I was in about eighth grade, I knew that was exactly what I wanted to do. And I put everything else really to the side and just focused on Playing the, playing the position that I love and grew up around. And so it helps when you got guys that are pretty dang good at it in front of you. And I just, you know, was lucky enough to be in that situation to learn from them. You had great teachers in-house, obviously, and people know most about Zach and, and Austin. But tell us about how good of a teacher of the craft your dad is. Yeah, I think the, the biggest thing about my dad was his willingness to kind of teach us that we wanted to learn. Um, the last thing that you ever had was someone who was going to push you in a way where you were uncomfortable or you know it made it so that you didn't want to play football. We genuinely loved football and when questions were asked he was going to answer them but he was never going to push too hard. Um, and so just to be able to learn from him and, and pick up certain things at you know the level that he played at with the coaches that he played with um, you know, it was, uh, it, it was a house that was, was a lot of fun. It wasn't, you know, the most competitive with guys around each other because of the age gaps. Um, so it really made it good just for the learning opportunities for, for one another. Kalani, if you could have a collie on your team, you're going to feel you're in pretty good shape at that spot, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I'd, take, I'd take their father right now. <laughs> you know, so they're, they're physical specimens, and they, um, they're just all around great, great people. And it's just nice to have Dylan with us. He brings so much to the table rather than just the stats. He does a lot for our team and, and great leadership, but um, he's, he's back home where he belongs, and, and we're excited to have him. I was watching the NFL game last night, and Peyton Manning did a video tribute to Drew Brees, and which reminded me uh, that you know Peyton for a time was Austin's quarterback, and they actually formed a pretty good relationship there. Uh, what was it like to know that your brother was now uh, uh, a receiving partner with one of the all-time greats in the NFL? Yeah, I mean, it was, I, in terms of one of the coolest experiences that I've ever had, that is hands down it. Um, the, uh, really, Austin allowed me to be a part of it. And so from the time I was 14, 15 years old, <laughs> um, I got the chance to be around Austin with Peyton um, and just to be able to learn from him and the experiences that I had. I remember I was a senior in high school and our starting quarterback got injured. And so I had to play quarterback for the last six games of the season. Um, and literally every single week after a game, and at random, and Austin had zero idea, but Peyton would call or text me after every single game after seeing my stats and would say, hey, great job, let's fix this, let's do this, and little things like that. And so um, at, as, a, as a senior in high school, to be able to, to be there and, you know, have someone come up to you and say, hey, Dylan, instead of Austin's little brother. Yeah. Um, it made for, for really the, the coolest you know, football experience of my life. So you at school with the phone going, uh, Peyton Manning here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was actually I was actually at Chipotle the first time that he called me. And I was sitting there, and I was like, this is weird. Like, it's a Tennessee number. And uh, all of a sudden, I picked up, and he said, Dylan, it's Peyton. <laughs> and I was like, hold on. 
who? <laughs> I was like, there's no way this is actually you. And he you know, started talking. He's like, now, Austin doesn't know I've called you. but And I was like, holy smokes. And I was in shock for a good amount of time. And when I'm in shock, I tend to talk a lot. <laughs> so it took me a while. So uh, bigger thrill, a uh, phone call from Peyton Manning or first touchdown as a Cougar? Uh, definitely the first touchdown. And I wish it was under different circumstances, but uh, it, was, it was a fun one to be a part of. Tell us about the play. Uh, so basically it was just a corner concept and the chance that I had to really go one-on-one -on -one with the nickel safety over the top. Uh, Tanner did a great job kind of holding them a little bit and then um, getting outside and luckily we saved enough space so that we could uh, so we could make a play. Nice play indeed. Uh, you're a popular interview this subject this week uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, you spent the last seasons playing uh, with Hawaii so a lot of your former teammates and friends are coming over to play you now. Uh, how do you categorize this experience in your athletic career of having to be on the other side, but back where you once were for yeah. BYU? Well, I think the fact that I've already done it once kind of helps. <laughs> and so um, the, the chance to really play against guys is going to be fun. But in terms of my preparation and what I'm doing every single day, I'm really a lot more focused on what we're trying to do as a team and um, the focus of how we're going to be successful instead of who we're playing, you know, whether it be Hawaii, whether it be Utah State, you name it, that aspect doesn't change for me. And if it did, you know, you'd probably get caught up in other things that aren't necessary. I, I was sad when you left BYU the first time, but I followed you on social media while you were at Hawaii. You, you genuinely had a good experience there. You were a good teammate and you were a great player for them. I was equally happy to get you back at BYU, and I'm sure for you too. You, you appreciate and respect what went on over there, but you're a Cougar now and happy to be back at BYU, right? Absolutely, through and through. And every day that I get to, to come here and be a part of certain things, uh, part of this program, part of this culture, part of the fans, everything like that, I mean, to, to go and then to be able to come back, you, you really learn how awesome this place is. And so I've really spent every single day focusing on what, what I can give my all and uh, never looking back so I don't regret anything. And Kalani, when I, uh, when I heard Austin would, or Dylan would come back, I was as excited to see him as a contributor on the field as I was to believe that in the locker room he was really going to help your team with leadership and example and all the kind of qualities you know he brings. Oh, yeah, and he has so much experience, and he's, he's such a great teammate. Um, it's what you expect from a colleague, but Dylan is a, he's got a great perspective on things and, and uh, he's willing to share and he's just a great teammate and it's been nice to have him around. He's it really helped our culture and our program uh, really start to thrive and um, we wouldn't be able to do it without him. I was really excited. I, th I felt like he was our best recruit that we could have brought in this year and, and um, he'll make a lot of plays for us, but uh, the, what he does that you don't see off the field is really more important for our program too. How long have you been married now? Uh, about three years. Three years already? Yep. Yep. It's and uh, tell, tell us a bit about your wife. Uh, so my wife is, uh, we grew up in the same area, and I met her one time in high school. And the first time that I met her in high school, she wasn't the biggest fan of me. Um, <laughs> she thought I was a little over the top and a little bit too much. And so <laughs> she, uh, it took her a while. And so we kind of, that was the only time that we had met. And then when I returned from my mission, my mom uh, was was quick to say that I needed to get a hold of this girl um, and she hadn't known that I had met her and so as soon as my mom said that I knew that was gonna, in my best interest <laughs> and so uh, <laughs> luckily I, I, I got a hold of her and um, she did the craziest thing and decided that she was gonna come to Hawaii and see if I was worth it uh, for a weekend and so she came out to Hawaii and we hit it off right away and we were engaged about six months later and then married six months after that so you're California kids, you've been living in the islands, how's she adjusting to Utah life? She, uh, surprisingly, she likes it a lot more than I thought. <laughs> she, uh, she didn't grow up coming to Utah as much as you know a lot of people do, especially from California. And so um, for her to be here as much as she absolutely loved Hawaii, like loved it, and it was hard for her to leave. Um, but now that she's here, I mean, the amount of friends, the family, uh, everything, I mean, she, she loves it. Great. Stick around for the next segment, okay? Perfect. All right. Uh, if you're looking for an even more convenient way to shop at Smith's, try Smith's Click List. Order online, then pick up curbside at the store. Visit smithsfoodanddrug.com for details. After the break, another special guest, special teams coordinator Ed Lamb joining us. This is BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Call it a path. Or way through. It can be arrow straight or have twists and turns. It's life's financial journey, and Mountain America Credit Union is here to guide you every step of the way. With timely advice and affordable products, this is your journey. Let's begin together.
We're Mountain America, guiding you forward. Okay, everyone, gather around. After four years of hard work, we are so excited to finally release this to the world. Secret, it's important, but I think I can trust you. It will either be super fun or the worst thing ever. Is it real? It's hard to say, it's 50-50. It's, it's definitely not the middle. You're in love with someone else? Yes. Yes. No! Girl, you know it! Please, no! No? Are you okay? How dare you ask that? I think it's safe to assume that James is dead. This is getting weirdly personal. The rest of the cast of Studio CL. Very impressive. Surprisingly impressive. Excellent. Really? Really. 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 It's insane. Absolutely brilliant. This is why I love you. And I love you. Oh, is that how you say it? Yes. Oh, that feels good to say. <laughs> what? What? What is that? What in the blooming beast of burden was that? <laughs> Did it. Don't miss Studio C, Mondays at 7 Mountain on BYU TV. <sighs> it's another entertaining week on BYU TV. Tonight at 8 Mountain, Todd Hansen scours the land to find the most amazing stories from everyday people. It's another riveting episode of The Story Trek. Then, after becoming a Kung Fu champion, Daniel visits the home of his teacher where they face rivals of the past and present in The Karate Kid Part 2, tomorrow at 7 Mountain. Watch your favorite BYU TV shows here and catch up anytime on BYUtv.org or the BYU TV app. BYU Football with Kalani Sitake is brought to you by Intermountain Healthcare, healing for life. Welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Use hashtag Sitake Show on Twitter and comment on the BYU TV Sports Facebook and Instagram pages for a chance to see your question asked during our next Q&A session coming up. And our next player, our next guest was a player on the winningest team in BYU football history, a former coaching colleague of Jim Harbaugh, among others, and the master architect of a rebuilding job at the FCS level before returning to the FBS and returning to his alma mater. Please welcome in special teams coordinator, linebackers coach, and assistant head coach, Ed Lamb. <laughs> coach, good to see you. Nice to see you, Greg. You grew up in California. Thanks. I did. And you played before your college ball at BYU. You played up in Idaho at, uh, at Ricks. And moving west from California to Idaho to play college football meant giving up your dreams and burgeoning career as a striker on the pitch, correct? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that was, that was the sport I loved the most growing up. And I, got, I came into football late, started as a sophomore in high school, went out for the team just kind of on a dare. My buddies were out for football and started into football and just kind of over time, that became my favorite sport. But you did love soccer for a time. I still do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you still watch it? I do. Yep. Still watch it. Still pretend like I know something about it. <laughs> my daughter would disagree. She's, uh, she's on the Tempview High School soccer team there. I think they just got a 2-1 victory, or at least the last I checked the score. Okay. Way to go, T-Birds. Uh, do you uh, follow a particular team or league, domestic, overseas, when it comes to soccer? It's whatever's on. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, someday I will, but right now it's... Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. The, Cougar, the Cougars <laughs> yeah. and my kids. That, yeah, there it is. That's the only teams I follow. Yeah. Uh, Kalani might be concerned if you yeah. were too into soccer yeah. right now yeah. at this point. Uh, from Ricks to BYU, back in the day, of course, Ricks to BYU was, it was a path for a lot of people, mm -hmm. and, and it doesn't exist anymore that way. Uh, did you see yourself taking the same path? Were you hoping that would be the outcome, or was it a plan of yours from the get-go? Um, it was all it was all day day by day. You know, I, I was a, not a member at Ricks College. There's not a lot of those, and uh, <laughs> so I didn't really know what Ricks was until I got there, and I wasn't really sure what BYU was all about. But one one thing led to another. Relationships, met coaches. Coaches from BYU came to Ricks and in the recruiting process, and it seemed like a, a great place to be and great men to be around. And I'm glad I chose BYU. And I'm sure you recognize to this day just how unusual and special a 14 and one season is, right? I do, yeah. I've been coaching now for a lot of years and, and was a player for many years. And that, that type of, of streak, putting together those type of wins, that was really special and took a lot of, there were a lot of close games that could have gone either way. And it was a great team, great, uh, great thing to be a part of. Kalani, when do you first recall meeting Ed Lamb? 1994, when I was a freshman and we were teammates together. and. Played in a bowl game, and uh, I was on the offensive side, and had to run into him a bunch of times, and um, just we 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 had a great friendship from when we played, and um, and then afterwards we stayed in touch, and as coaches we stayed friends, and obviously we're back here together. And Ed's a great coach; he's done great things as a head coach, and 
great evaluator of talent and a great builder of men. And so uh, it's just great to have him here with me and share with his journey because he wouldn't be able to do it without his skill and without his, his appreciation for the game, but more importantly, without his appreciation for BYU. And Dylan, from your perspective, where you reside, what do you, uh, how do you see what Coach Lamb brings to the program? Yeah, I mean, I think in terms of the energy and, and the enthusiasm that he brings, and I guess the most important thing, I mean, you, as, a, as an offensive guy, I really don't get to see the defensive coach. And as a, as a special teams coordinator and the assistant head coach, I mean, you see a guy who's ready to lead at all times. Um, and in terms of what we do as a special teams, um, it's, a, it's a special place to, to be a part of something. And, uh, you know, it's not just offense and defense here. And Coach Lamb's done a phenomenal job in making it a three, three place aspect. And uh, special teams is, you know, in my opinion, one of the most important teams on the field. And uh, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't trust anybody else but him to do it. So you have your assistant head coach role, your special teams role, and then your linebackers position coach role. Let's hit linebackers just for a moment. And uh, Coach Sitake told us earlier in the show that, uh, unfortunately, Zane Anderson's season has prematurely ended, and that's someone you got to bring over from your old safety spot to linebacker. So I'm sure you're disappointed that he wasn't able to see it through for this season. Yes, I, I'm really disappointed for him. Uh, excited about what he accomplished in the, in the few games that he was able to play, about half of a season there. Missed a couple of games here before this last one, but was very productive in the last game and made the transition really nicely. I think has a new understanding of what it takes to be successful. So a, a, a off season year and you get him back. Uh, yep, we'll, we'll get him right back, and he'll be one of our real strengths moving into next year. Depth has been developed though at linebacker as a necessity. It has, yeah, and that's you know every every starter on the team that goes down was a you know or, or every new starter was a backup at one time and, and really that's that's the name of the game in football guys understand that uh, I've talked to Zane several times since this last game he's upset about not being a part of things going forward but he'll bounce right back and be ready and and on this current team there'll be a new guy that steps up and makes up for that production your plate is full uh, special teams performance through six games and you really can't assess there's so many areas to consider right now but if you had to kind of wrap up a halfway point report on your group uh, what pleases you most what needs more uh, sharpening up oh right now the, the coverage teams it's, it's hard to match up to those coverage teams they uh, the, the punt coverage and kickoff coverage has just been been outstanding um, several years running now and probably predates the time that I was working with the special teams here I think our return games have showed some life this year. We haven't had as many opportunities in the kickoff return as we will going forward. And the punt return game has, uh, has really shown some life and made some big plays too. So I hope to just keep those parts of it going and be more consistent in our, in our kicking game, make sure that we finish drives with three points and extra points. All right, Ed Lamb is with us, and you get to hear Ed Lamb Mondays, at least every other Monday, a couple Mondays out of three, on the Coordinator's Corner with uh, Jeff Grimes, Elisa Tuiaki, and Ed Lamb. Listen to it Mondays at 1 Eastern, 11 Mountain, on BYU TV and BYU Radio. After the break, your questions for Dylan Colley and Ed Lamb as BYU Football with Kalani Sitake continues. Hi, Daddy. Hi, sweetie. Check this out. Have a car wreck? Martin's Collision Repair. The right repair, the right paint, the right choice. Martin's Collision Repair. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Well, the premise of the show is kids and parents match up answers. So uh, first we have the kids give us some answers and the parents try to guess what they said and then we switch it around so the parents answer and the kids try to guess what they said. And then the all-important uh, bake-off, which is when the kids bake up a real tasty treat <laughs> that includes some normal items and then some very strange items like uh, seafood and hot spicy things. Sure, and then we make uh, and, like, the parents eat them. And the parents eat yeah. them and uh, they try to guess which one their kid baked. And whoever has the most points comes over and spins the prize wheel back there and uh, whatever they land on, that's their prize. 
I think the first thing people are going to think when they see this show is my entire family can watch this. They'll be very excited about that. And they'll also relate to it. And I think what's going to happen is they're going to be inspired to play it at home. They're going to be like, hey, Dad, what am I thinking? What's my answer to this question? You try to match it. Or, Mom, you try to match this, or vice versa. Watch Just Like Mom and Dad, Mondays at 6 Mountain. Uh, Zach Wilson, freshman quarterback here at BYU. Uh, favorite movie, remember the Titans. Favorite non-BYU sports team, uh, Patriots, bucket list place to go. Bora Bora, favorite, uh, favorite music group, Chris Brown. Favorite food, steak, would you rather sing or dance, sing. Beach or mountains, beach. Favorite TV show, um, Blue Mountain State. Favorite, <laughs> favorite non-football hobby, uh, just hanging out with my friends. Favorite athlete, Aaron Rodgers. Biggest fear, heights, um, jumping off anything. Uh, favorite superhero, um, Superman, Michael LeBron, LeBron, favorite coach, Aaron Roderick. Uh, pro tip. Uh, on the favorite coach question, always pick your position, coach. I find that's a good idea. Uh, welcome back to BYU Football with Kalani Sitake here on BYU TV and BYU Radio, presented by Intermountain Healthcare. Time for some more participation from Cougar Nation. It's Q&A time for Dylan Colley and Ed Lamb. To social media we go. And uh, from Tommy Walter on Facebook for Dylan Colley. Dylan, what is the best piece of technical advice you ever got from Austin? Uh, patience in and out of routes. The ability to go up and, and attack a guy. Um, I think that's something that he did a really good job of, and um, his ability to teach that to me is something that really changes the, the facet of how I run my routes because I'm not you know, the 4-2, the 4-3 four four guy, and so it um, comes with a lot more technical part, and so that's one of them that I, I would say is probably the best advice. Austin, a faster guy? Today, no. <laughs> <laughs> Back in the day, yes. Maybe. Yeah. We'll see. Uh, by the way, how's he doing these days? He's doing really well. Where is he living? He lives uh, just outside of Salt Lake. Yeah, because I see him frequently. Yeah. Yeah. He, he comes down here every now and then. Yeah, it's always cool to see him. Uh, for, for Ed here from at B Royal Blue Coog on Twitter, uh, Coach Lamb, does exceptional special teams play influence a player's consideration for an offensive or defensive position? It does. Um, there's just there are a lot of variables, decision makers on who plays on offense and defense. The, obviously, the coordinator, the position coaches, and so. But I think that's a great place, a great early proving ground. Typically, the schemes, the number of plays we have on any given special teams phase is a lot less than than what you might have on offense or defense. So it's an opportunity for sometimes players to show. Uh, that might not be as experienced in offense or defense. It's a, it's a way for them to show that they can block and tackle. And it, it oftentimes leads to more playing time. Kalani, what's your uh, perspective on special teams relative to how many offensive and de defensive starters get used there or get to be considered there as the head coach? Well, I mean, I told Ed that, that uh, we can use everyone's open fair game for special teams, and uh, we'll rest our players on offense and defense. Special teams too important. So um, we, we'll use our, our starters and... Um, I think Ed's done a great job at, at getting the right talent on the team. But, um, you know, we don't get as much practice time with special teams, so we need to have our best guys playing that phase. Okay. Uh, for Dylan from at Walls of Magic on Twitter, you got to play against BYU last year. You're now part of the BYU team this year. Did you notice anything from BYU last year that you've now judged as an improvement to this season? Like, how much did you really focus on BYU? You are a Hawaii warrior last year. Yeah, I mean, I, I watched – probably 80% of the BYU game since I had been gone. Um, I think just being rooted in it, you're always kind of a fan. And so I think even just playing against BYU last year, the, the biggest difference would just be the culture of the entire thing. Um, the energy, uh, the, the together aspect of what went on both offensively and defensively. I mean, I think a lot of people are, are down on what's going on, but if you could truly see the growth that, that we've made as a program and where we're going, everything will be, be just fine. And so just to be a part of that's been incredible. What do you think of a 3-3 three and three record, and how much does that really tell or not tell about this year's team? Yeah, I mean, you wish you were 6-0. and oh. I think every team in the nation wishes that. But um, really what it shows is that we have the opportunity. We kind of got a blank slate at 3-3. Three and three, And so it just gives every single week the, the chance for us to, to better ourselves and progress. And when I tell you and promise you that we are progressing and making things happen, um, this thing's going to come together. And I, I trust that and believe that. Uh, Coach Lamb, how do you view 3-3 three and three as we are kind of at the halfway point here? 
You know, it's just the, the product of what we've done. It's it's, it's real. You know, it, I've heard guys say, "Oh, you take this play away or or that play away," and I mean, we're not interested in that. We're, um, you know, coaches and athletes. So we've we've been through plenty of wins and losses, and so we just take ownership. Take ownership every time we lose and learn from it, and uh, take pride in in putting the right efforts together, making the right calls doing the right things to, to get a victory, and that's really important to us, of paramount importance on game day. And uh, we're, we're moving forward right now, and the, the next goal is 4-3. and three. Kalani, at 3-3, uh, at three and three, you're three wins away from postseason eligibility. That has to be clearly a main target. You've got a Hawaii team coming in here wanting to get bowl eligible on your field, and so you want to stop that from happening. And, and the three wins, are that, is that kind of a big, is that a, a target or a finish line in and of itself? Or are you, are you like Ed saying, hey, it's, it's four and three, it's not six and three we're trying to get? Yeah, we're just trying to get our fourth win. We've been do, trying to do that for the last couple weeks. We haven't played BYU football, and so we intend on doing that this Saturday. And that's just happened to play Hawaii, who's coming off of a great season so far, you know. But um, we, we are familiar with them, playing them last year. But uh, it's more about what we do as a team. That's our focus is on how we can um, get better, make sure that we sh show what we're doing on the football field in practice on, on game day. Kalani will stay with us for the wrap-up, but let's uh, give a hand for Dylan Colley and Ed Lamb for joining us as our special guest tonight. Thank you, guys. Fans, you can break down Cougar football with Dave McCann, Blaine Fowler, Brian Logan, and David Nixon each week on After Further Review, Tuesdays at 7 o'clock Eastern on BYU TV and the app. We are back to wrap up tonight's show right after this on BYU Football with Kalani Sitake. Are you looking for a better way to deliver results this year? Expanding your product line or building new locations? How about your online presence? Does it need a boost? Maybe you just want to put a little more distance between you and the competition. Tap into the powerful engine of BYU Athletics and let us put together a plan unique to your business. We can provide you with the tools designed to enhance your brand on a local, regional, or national level. We invite your team to join ours. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Bruh, I ain't got no chill. The BYU TV Sports Post Game. BYU versus Hawaii. Saturday after the game. Some say if you're looking for the soul of America, you'll find it right here in Memphis, Tennessee. But if Memphis is the soul of America, then what's the soul of Memphis? From the banks of the Mississippi to the neon lights of Beale Street, that soul's hiding somewhere, and I've got to put it all in one painting. Join me as we paint the town of Memphis, Tennessee. Don't miss Painting the Town tonight at 830 Mountain on BYU TV. Hetty. 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 Hetty, 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 after becoming a Kung Fu champion, Daniel visits the home of his teacher where they face rivals of the past and present in the Karate Kid Part 2. Tomorrow at 7 Mountain. Watch your favorite BYU TV shows here and catch up anytime on BYUtv.org or the BYU TV app. Game day is Saturday for the Cougars and Rainbow Warriors starting on BYU Radio with Cougar pregame live at 8.15 p.m. Eastern Time, 6.15 here in the mountains. BYU TV's countdown to kickoff starts at 9 Eastern. The game itself is on ESPN2 and BYU Radio at 10.15 Eastern, 8.15 here in Provo. And you'll have post-game coverage on both BYU Radio and BYU TV right after the game. Well, tomorrow is a special day for Kalani Sitake. 43rd birthday, we're told. Is that accurate? Yeah, I'm... I feel like I'm 70, though. <laughs> <laughs> we, did, we did provide some birthday cake to help us all celebrate uh, with Coach here tonight. So as soon as the show wraps up, we're going to dig into this out in the uh, lobby area here. So happy 43rd birthday to Kalani Sitake. We hope that, that one of the birthday presents he gets is win number four uh, for birthday number 43 this week. So uh, we're going to be... Uh, we're going to be in that momentarily. But uh, Kalani, happy birthday to you. Comes We come a day before your big day and hope you have a good one tomorrow. Appreciate it. You guys didn't have to do that, but thank you. When you get to my age, you forget about these days, you know. It's all about the kids, so 
But uh, thank you. We'll have some, you know, hopefully have a great present on Saturday night, and that's, that's all it. I can focus on right now. But just thank you to all the fans and everybody that cared and appreciate them. In the last 45 seconds here, uh, playing Hawaii, a team from the islands with so many islanders on both teams, this came as a special a special personality, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, and, and I, I grew up um, knowing the, the Rainbow Warriors and, and um, you know, just always interested in what they're doing as a program. But uh, they've done a great turnaround with, with Rolo at the helm, and it's going to be fun to, to be on the field with them and compete. And I expect our guys to perform really well Saturday. All right, good luck Saturday night. Go Cougs. Go Cougs, let's do it. All right, we'll take a break next Tuesday for the bye week, but we'll be back in uh, two weeks with more BYU football with Kalani Sitake. For Dylan Colley, Ed Lamb, the coach Kalani Sitake, my name is Greg Rubel, and we will see you in two weeks. This is the BYU football with Kalani Sitake in Studio C at BYU TV. So long. Run free, unwind, unravel someplace outside with lots to do. Green trees, red rocks, and don't forget that blue sky. The sunshine shining, fun shine. Oh, and only think I might just stay a while. Say hooray all day because the sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. Sun is gonna shine on me. You're watching BYU TV on KBYU DT Provo Salt Lake City.